Hello everyone. Today I'll be going over our quality improvement project. The title is Optimizing the Use of CT Angiograms in Diagnosing Pulmonary Embolism. A quick background. Pulmonary embolism is one of the leading causes of death in hospitalized patients. A CTPA scan can diagnose a clinically relevant PE in 98% of cases. The risk of procedure include cost, risks of AKI, and radiation exposure. Risk stratification sources such as the PERC and the modified well score have been developed to help guide clinicians to assess the need of CTA chest in order to rule out PE. Our QI problem and our aim. CTPA has become more available and quicker, resulting in physicians becoming more reliant on imaging to confirm clinical diagnoses. In our community hospital, based on observation, there appeared to be a high proportion of negative CTPAs. This indicated an overuse, resulting in unnecessary radiation exposure for patients and increased cost. Our aim was to achieve a 30% reduction of inappropriate ordering of CT angiograms and ruling out pulmonary embolism over a one-year period. Our method and study design and a recap. Using the IHA model, a quality improvement project was initiated. PDSA cycles were used to test change. A multidisciplinary team was created, including ER physicians, EMR staff, internal medicine physicians, and residents. For our first PDSA cycle, PDSA-1, ER physicians were educated on the use of risk stratification scoring systems such as a modified Wells and PERC score. Education was done on a one-on-one -on -one basis, reiterating the validity of these scores. In PDSA-2, along with reiterating the information of the above mentioned, Scoring systems, a physical copy of the algorithm was created by the QI team and made available to the ER physicians to better assist them in determining if a CTPE would be required. In PDSA-3, the algorithm used in PDSA-2 was reinforced. This is our algorithm that we used and provided if a PE was suspected. The well score, which is to the right, is shown. Greater than 6, CT angiogram. Less than 2, we would go with the PERC score. And between 2 and 6, D-dimer would be the next test. Greater than 500, we would proceed to the CT. Less than 500, no intervention. As far as well score that are less than 2, a PERC score would be performed where, if negative, no intervention would be required. And if positive, a D-dimer test would be. Our PDSA-4, a request to incorporate the risk stratification into the EMR system was approved and utilized as our PDSA-4 intervention. The algorithm created in earlier cycles was also used to determine if a CTA is appropriate or not. Post-PDSA-4, retrospective analysis of 51 patient charts were done. 100% of charts had CTA ordered out of which 39 from the 51 charts had appropriate use of CTAs per the algorithm, where four from these 51 were diagnosed with pulmonary embolism. These findings were compared to post-PDSA-3 results, where in 20 out of 65, 30% charts had appropriate use of CTAs. After comparison, there was approximately a 46% reduction in inappropriate ordering of the CTA. From a cost standpoint, post-PDSA-4 11 charts had inappropriate use, which approximately costed $22,000 when we compared to post-PDSA-3, where 35 charts had inappropriate use. The cost savings were about $50,000. Here is a pie chart outlining the PDSA-3 and PDSA-4 cycles that were used. For our discussion and conclusion, utilizing risk stratification tools during PE evaluation results in decreased unnecessary costs and potential harm to patients by only selecting high-risk population appropriate for further testing. The approach addresses the issue of high-value care.